Huzzah, and welcome future and current artists to another episode of Drawing with Dr. Doodle. I'm your art teacher, Dr. Doodle, and today you're going to learn how to draw something amazing. Hamburger City. Harold, I was just about to say that. Well, before we begin, you're only going to need two items. Hopefully you have these, a piece of paper and a pencil. Now, if you want to color your work in when we're done and you have a crayon or a colored pencil or markers, you can color it in when we finish today. However, if you don't have those supplies right now, you can always wait to color your work in when you get those supplies. So you know what? Let's begin. Hello, and let's begin today's lesson on how to draw a hamburger and then turn it into a city. I know, it sounds very silly, but it's going to be fun to do. So let's make sure that we have our supplies that we need to work on our artwork today. A pencil and a piece of paper. If your pencil isn't sharp enough, make sure that you or your parents have a sharpener that you can use. And if you're check to see if your sharpener is full, if it's not full, you can use it. If it's full of pencil shavings, you'll want to toss them out and clean it up before and empty it before you use it. Always check every time you sharpen your pencil to make sure that everything's going okay. And if we're all good, which it looks like we are, you can put that sharpener down and we can begin. Today, we're going to be drawing on our paper horizontally or the long way. First thing, and the first line that we should do is make a line that goes from the left to the right. And if you have a ruler, you can use a ruler to make a straighter line. And this line is the horizon line. It's the line that separates the sky from the ground, or in this case, the table from the sky. So we're going to start by making the bottom of our hamburger, and that's going to be the bottom bun. So to make our bottom bun, I would suggest that we make a large letter U. Actually, this isn't going to be our hamburger just yet. This will become our plate of our hamburger. From here, let's make a letter C and a backwards letter C. And then we can connect the line right over here. And this will be our plate. From here, we're going to make another letter U. This will be our hamburger, the bottom bun. We'll make two lines going up. And then what we can do is we can make another letter U connecting these two lines. And it's okay if your lines aren't straight or if you make a mistake, especially if you start to draw lightly first. That way you can erase any lines that you're going to make. Just specifically, any lines that overlap other lines, you're going to want to erase them. So in a little bit, we'll be erasing this line right over here. And if you want to, you could erase it before you start drawing the rest of your hamburger, like I'm doing right now. You could wipe away the eraser shavings. Now, from here, our hamburgers might look different depending on what kind of toppings you want to make. We have a bottom bun, so let's make something next like the meat. Or maybe it's not meat, maybe it's faux meat. It could be uh, tofu instead of meat. It's up to you. But to do this, we're going to make a letter C, a small letter C, and a backwards letter C here. But we're not going to add something on top yet because we're going to continually add layers to this hamburger. It's going to be a pretty big hamburger. It's going to have a lot of toppings on it. Next topping, let's make our lettuce. So to make our lettuce, we can make a bunch of mixture of letter C's, letter U's, and that could be hanging over our meat until we get to the other side. On top of our lettuce, we can make, maybe we have tomatoes on top of this. So I'm going to make it so that way I have 
four tomatoes, sliced tomatoes on this hamburger. Let's make a large letter U, another large letter U, another one over here, and a smaller one here. And then let's leave the top open again for the next layers. And we'll add details in a little bit. On top of this, let's add some ketchup, or maybe you'd like mustard instead. And to do that, we're gonna have a bunch of long letter U's just dripping down, dripping all over our tomatoes and onto the ketchup even. And we're gonna leave this even open because we're going to have some melty cheese. So to make some melty cheese very lightly, let's make some rectangles. Let's have maybe three rectangles. And then what we can do is, maybe it's not melted, maybe it's just sliced cheese. So we're going to have just three rectangles of cheese without the tops. And let's take a break so that everybody can catch up to where we're at. Because our next layer is going to be another layer of meat or tofu. And to do that, we're going to make a letter U on top of this. We can close up any of the lines over here. And on the sides, we're going to make a letter C and uh, another letter C, but a backwards one over here. And we're making our burger pretty big. So let's make something else on top of our burger here, the second um, meat patty over here, or tofu patty. Let's have, instead of lettuce on top of this, hmm, let's think a little bit of what we can do that's different. If you want the same thing, you can have the same thing. You can have another piece of lettuce. And you could repeat, it could become a pattern, repeating the same kind of lines and shapes is what a pattern is. So maybe you'll want to repeat it because you're comfortable with that and make our letter use, our four letter use for the tomatoes, and then the topping with either mustard or ketchup. And then we could have our three rectangles. And you know what, since this is getting really tall, let's make a letter U and then a lowercase letter N, and then we have the top bun right over here. We have a pretty big hamburger here. As an artist, it's a good idea to take a break from your work. Taking a break allows us to look at our work with fresh eyes and possibly with some new ideas. So that's why we're going to take a puzzle break. And what type of puzzles are we going to do on Drawing with Dr. Doodle? Well, we're going to tackle puzzles that I love to do. They're called Rebus puzzles. Rebus is spelled R-E-B-U-S. And what is a Rebus puzzle? Well, I'm glad you asked. Behind me is an example of just one, and we're going to walk through the solution to this puzzle right now. So what word do you see behind me? Well, take your time. If you guessed the word behind me is hurry, then you're half right. What direction is the word hurry going in? Well, take some more time to solve that. Well, if you guess that the word hurry is going up, then you have half of the solution as well. So let's combine the two half answers or half solutions that we solve together. Hurry, so we've got the word hurry, and the word hurry is going up. And if you heard me just say that and it clicked in your head that the answer is hurry up, then you have solved this rebus. So with that out of the way, why don't you try to solve this puzzle by yourself, but you don't need to worry, hurry up to solve this puzzle. Take your time. And if you get your parents' permission, you can email the solution to the doodle doctor at gmail.com. Now let's get back to the lesson and we need to add some details. Let's start from the top and work our way down now that we've created the whole of our burger. On the top, let's make it a sesame seed bun. To do that, let's just make some ovals like this. You can make as many sesame seeds as you want. It doesn't need to have sesame seeds if you don't want it to. Take your time. Your seeds could be big, they could be small, they could be more circular. Everybody's burger is going to look different and that is okay. If you make a mistake, you can always erase and redraw it. 
Moving down, let's add details to our tomatoes. We're going to make a letter U above the other letter U. And then what we're going to do is make a line going up two lines, a rectangle, a very thin one. And then we can add some seeds in our tomatoes. And we're going to do that again for these tomatoes here. So the letter U above the first letter U, rectangle going up, and then our seeds. For the meat or the patties, we're going to make some lines going up and down. And since it's getting overlapped, meaning that lettuce and the other stuff is on top of the meat, you don't need to draw the lines in the lettuce, just in the parts that are the meat. If you have a ruler, you can make straight up and down lines. Now, I told all of you that we are going to be making a hamburger sitting. So that's what we're going to start to do right now. We're going to transform our hamburger into a city. How, how do we do that, you're probably asking? Well, let's talk about and think about what do you see in a city? Well, we see tall buildings and our hamburger is pretty tall. We, what, what are on buildings, in buildings? Well, on buildings are doors and there are usually lines that separate the buildings. So let's make and separate this into, we'll draw two large lines that just separate the sections of our hamburgers and of our hamburger. And this could be the sections of different buildings. So buildings have doors. So let's make a rectangle here for a door. Maybe this building here has two doors. So we make a long rectangle and a line down. And maybe this side, this rectangle has three doors. So we'll do two lines going up and three doors here. We could have door knobs. It's up to you where they're placed. And now we have to add windows into our building. So maybe where the cheese is, we could have windows. Maybe we could have a bunch of lines going down, maybe across. Maybe we just have lines going like this in this building here. Maybe on this building, it's all the same. And then over here, maybe it's circular windows. And then maybe on the top of the building, there is a radio tower. And then this could be here, the plate. We could transform that into the street and the sidewalk. So let's make another letter U close to the building and that would be the sidewalk. Another letter U underneath the plate and that could be the other side of the street sidewalk. And then what we can do here in the plate that's going to be the, the street, we can make these lines and these are lane lines or lane divider lines. This is the way that we can see where the cars are supposed to go. So on the street, you can draw your cars. And since this is just something that is fantastical, meaning it doesn't happen in real life, there's no such thing as a hamburger city. You could draw your cars and make them however you want. They could look like food. They could just be circles. You, it's whatever you feel comfortable drawing right now. From there, maybe we wanna add some windows down here. Maybe outside of the plate street, maybe there's a park. So maybe we could add bushes. It's up to you how your burger and plate and table city looks. Maybe on this side of the plate, there is water. So we can make waves over here. We could separate the water over here. Maybe this is all land and this is just water. We could draw a boat by making a letter U and line across, a rectangle here and a triangle. We could erase the side of that. Again, this is all in your head, in your imagination, and it's yours. You get to make it look however you want. Maybe in the background behind the burger city, maybe there is a bridge. 
So to make a bridge, you'll make a line across, another line across, and then what we can do is we can make rectangles every so often going up and down and then we can connect these by making a curved line or letter U's all the way across and then on the bridge we can draw cars or trucks or whatever else you want on the bridge. In the background, it could be daytime, so we see a sun, maybe some clouds, maybe some birds that are so far away that they, they look like letter M's. And now we have a burger city. And I'm sure that you did not expect to be making this when you first started drawing this, following along and drawing with me. Now, you can add more details if you want. If you only have a pencil and you don't have coloring art supplies like a marker or markers or crayons or colored pencils, then you could use your pencil, your regular pencil, and you could shade in. Shading is adding shadows. So if the light is hitting something, then shadows will be on the other side. Or if you do have markers, crayons, and or colored pencils, you can use those right now and color in your work. If you don't have those supplies, you can always color this in another time, another day, whenever you get the access to those supplies. I hope you enjoyed making this Burger City with me. Until next time, future and current art. Now it's time for me, Harold, the extremely talented art critic to critique your artwork. Wait, what? Don't I worry, didn't agree to this. I won't be too harsh. Why, thank you. Uh what? Okay, Wait. fellow art detectives, let's get critiquing. What do you see? What do you think is happening in this artwork? What materials do you think the artist used to make this artwork? Does this remind you of anything? What questions do you have about the artwork? Pretend you can enter into the artwork. What do you see? What do you smell? What do you hear? What piece of the artwork is your favorite and why? If you could change one thing about this artwork, what would you change? How does this artwork make you feel? Can you explain why? If you had to describe this artwork to a friend, what kind of words would you use? So Dr. D, was that so hard now? It wasn't hard what at all, Harold, hope thank you. Is how hard I will critique him next time. Until next time, future and current artists, that's it for today. I hope that you enjoyed creating art with me and that I've inspired you to create as imaginative artwork in the future. If you'd like to have your work displayed on, the sh on a future episode, obviously you need your parents' permission, but once you get it, you can email your artwork at thedoodledoctor at gmail.com. Well, bye.